In this video, I will show you how to simulate Takara's infusion cloning with a single fragment in SnapGene. Infusion cloning is a ligation independent cloning technique that uses complementary annealing of an insert and a vector. Briefly, PCR primers are designed to generate flanking homologous overlaps, each around 15 to 20 base pairs long, between the cloning insert and vector. The vector and insert products are then recombined with the infusion enzyme. In SnapGene, these steps are all simulated in a single tool. Let's see what this looks like. I have a PGL3 plasmid open that contains a GFP reporter. In another file, I have the sequence of the BDNF gene promoter. What I want to do is to insert this BDNF gene promoter into the PGL3 plasmid. Specifically, I want the gene to be placed just before the GFP reporter around here. To perform infusion cloning in SnapGene, go to Actions, Infusion Cloning, Insert Fragment. In the first tab named Vector, I need to specify the vector file. SnapGene automatically enters the sequence that we were looking at when we opened the infusion cloning window. So this is the PGL3 plasmid. You can use the vector drop-down menu to select a different file. I now need to select the region in the vector where I want the BDNF promoter to be inserted. To do this, I will switch to the sequence view. Since this product will be used in a reporter assay, I want to insert my fragment just before the GFP gene. To insert a fragment, simply move the cursor in between the desired bases and click. Alternatively, you can click and drag on a region to replace that selected region with the fragment. In the next tab named Fragment, I need to select the file containing the insert of interest. This will be my BDNF promoter file. Again, simply use the drop down menu to the right to select the desired file. To specify the region to be inserted, I will again switch to the sequence view and highlight the region of interest. In this case, the whole sequence is required. So I'll press Ctrl and A on my keyboard as a shortcut to select the whole sequence. If you need to change the orientation of your insert, you can flip your sequence using the buttons to the right. Moving on to the products tab, I now need to choose the PCR primers and see a preview of the final construct. To do this, I will select the Choose Overlapping PCR Primers button to let SnapGene design the most suitable primers for this infusion cloning experiment. It's possible to change the desired melting temperature for the PCR primers, but I will leave this at 60 degrees, which is the default value. You can also specify the number of homologous overlapping bases for the primers. The default setting of 15 nucleotides is optimal for single fragment infusion cloning. So I'll keep this and select Choose Primers. The resulting products can now be previewed in the Product tab. As you can see, this is 4,544 base pairs long. By switching back to the Vector tab, I can see that there are two primers named Vector.4 and Vector.rev that start at the insertion point I selected earlier. The result will be a linearized plasmid. In the Fragment tab, you can see that there are another two primers, this time named Fragment.4 and fragment.rev that flank my insert. In the primer sequences displayed below, the bases shown in red are the overlapping homologous sections that match that at the insertion point in the vector. Finally, I will call the file pgl3-bdnf and click the clone button to simulate the infusion cloning. In the map view, you can turn on history colors by clicking on the show colors button. This will display the vector as black with the newly inserted region in red. By switching to the sequence view, you can see the different primers and the overlaps. The primers view will display all of the primers in the file. Finally, the history view will display the schematic of the simulated workflow. And that wraps up this video tutorial. In this video, you have learned how to simulate infusion cloning in SnapGene. For more information about simulating other cloning techniques in SnapGene, check out the other tutorials on the SnapGene website. If you found this video useful, please leave a like. It really does help support the channel. If you've got a question, pop it down in the comments below. Also, consider subscribing for more weekly tutorials.